right to the runs. We've got Dragon Age Inquisition by Lemura right now. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Uh, and welcome to SGDQ. I am Lemura. Uh, some of you might know me from my Dragon Age Origins run from earlier this year at AGDQ. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to be able to bring another uh, Dragon Age game to the scene. <laughs> um, with me, I have some lovely commentators, uh, if they can introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Letters Words. Uh, I did the Dragon Age Origins run many years ago at GDQ, and I also routed Dragon Age Inquisition kind of when it first came out. Uh, hi, I'm Brian Otto. I guess I'm reprising my role on the couch uh, for the Dragon Age run. Thank you so much for having me back, Lem. I've uh, okay. never seen this run before, really, but I'm super stoked to be here again. So, yeah, thank you. All right. Hey, I'm a flying coconut. Um, let's see. I'm another runner for this game. I have world records for the other categories. Um, and I'm just a big fan of the game, and I'm glad Lem has me here. <laughs> hey. <laughs> All right. So, uh, what is the character name? Bingus, winning <laughs> big over Inquisitor and Old Sand. So it'll be capital B, Bingus. Bingus. All right. All right. Cool. That's the character name. <laughs> um, so timer doesn't start just yet. I'll um, say when that happens. <laughs> but um, I mean, I can begin by kind of like haphazardly explaining the story or the premise of the game at least. Um, Basically, a lot has happened in Thetis since the events of Dragon Age Origins, um, and I won't really be going over all of that, but what you need to know is that there is a war going on between the Circles of Magi, the magic users in this world, and the magic. Templar Order, the ones that are there to like keep control and order over magic users. Time starts <laughs> now. <laughs> um, Good luck. And... Don't the know that. <laughs> the exact reason you ended up here, because uh, you ended up going to the Temple of Sacred Ashes uh, to try and stop the war and, and stuff like that. The exact reason you as the player, as the Inquisitor, ended up here varies a bit from character to character, but um, we do know that all of them are from the Free Marchers, the location of the second game. So here I'm just quick saving, quick loading real quick to skip a dialogue scene with Cassandra. It saves like a second um, and easy enough to perform. So. Um, Does jumping yeah, like this have any sort of like movement benefit, or is it just...? Yeah, so it seems to be a lot faster. Uh, I'm not too sure about the details on that. Lectures, you can probably give some better explanation. I mean, it's kind of hard to calculate exactly how much faster it is, because it's only faster on like flat ground and going down uh, slopes a bit, and... Like, what path you take, I guess, here determines how much time it saves. And it really only saves a lot of time kind of in the first five minutes of the game when you don't have faster ways to... Like, there's other faster ways we get to move later, and then jumping is no longer relevant. Um, so also as the main character, and one thing that makes us kind of special in this game, I guess, is that we, we were the only one that really survived the explosion. And we're left with this mark on our hand uh, that we now have to use to like close uh, rifts and stuff where demons are pouring out from. Um, so the chosen one storyline is real in this game. <laughs> I think it's also t important to point out uh, we're playing as a warrior. Um, all three of the classes in. Inquisition have been fastest at different points in time for any percent runs, but um, the other, you know, Rogue and Mage were more relevant when we had to do a lot of combat on the Inquisitor, and uh, Warrior is mostly because its movement speed is fastest with abilities we're going to use. This way, down the bank, the road ahead. Um, so now we've picked up uh, the rest of our team, really, and in this game, you have the option of like uh, playing as the different ones to give you like full tactical advantage over situations in combat and stuff. Demons ahead. Oh, you can actually take control of them. Yes. Okay. Okay. 
So different than Mass Effect then, where you just have people with you that you're kind of guiding to do what you want. Yeah. Yeah, no, because you can control all of them, so... Are you in um, That's pretty cool. Even, even if the Inquisitor dies, um, get you, you don't get, like, done. a game over screen until sure everyone dies. Story. That's what you would have done. It's more believable. Uh, in this entire prologue it's sequence, we're pretty, pretty much just doing intended strats. I mean, we're trying to go through it as fast as we can, but there isn't really too much we can do. Yeah, and I'll point out that um, we do have a, a strat to skip the whole prologue, but um, for any percent, there's an item that we need to get that we can only like progress to after completing the prologue. Uh, so we have to do it as intended for any percent. Yeah. Is another that... like. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, another like combat strat that we have. Uh, when we're doing our auto attacks, you can cancel it with the search action. And the search action just being um, like a, a button you press to search for items in the world and stuff. So that cancels the animation so we can just go back oh. into attacking faster. So that would just like highlight highlight like items in the world around you, essentially introducing that as an animation cancel. Yeah. The rift is gone. Open yeah, they, the pretty game. much it. Yeah, the auto attack has like a three oh. attack sequence. Um, and the, la the third one is like really slow. It does more damage, but not enough that it's take it like makes up for the longer animation. Yeah, yeah. So here's our main movement ability that we'll be using throughout the run. Yeah. Charging bull, I think it was called. Yeah, yep. charging bull. I would imagine that's the reason that that warrior is fast. Yep. Yeah. And later on, uh, he'll get an upgrade to make it <laughs> go a little faster. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for now, it's it's still better than just running around, right? So it's pretty nice to have. How many yeah. Most oh, of these man. fights are going by decently it, fast. Yeah, that's pretty good. Quickly, then. Uh, one thing that's also just relevant of where we just were is um, we leveled up and picked some abilities, and we got two abilities. That's something that's unique to playing as a human. A human gets an extra ability point to start with. Which is why we use human. Yeah. The, the other races do have other like benefits with them, but for the speedrun, the extra ability is the best thing, really. That is where you walked out of the faith. So now, once I'm through with these cutscenes, <laughs> Here is the big rift that we're supposed to be closing, or at least to stabilize for now. And uh, we're about to meet like the first boss of the game, this giant demon. If I could not click the wrong buttons, that would be great to do this first, and then I can charge. <laughs> we must strip its defenses. So, and, the, and this fight is going to take a little bit of time, because we're not that strong just yet. One thing you can also think about with this run is that um, you can kind of split it up into two different parts. Uh, the first part being our preparation phase, uh, where we're just preparing for the end of the run. And uh, the, the second half being where like most of the action is going to go on. So yeah, this boss fight is kind of um, very slow. I was going to say, um, it's not going fast, that's for sure. <laughs> It, 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 it's kind of forced that way. This, this boss has like a few different, um, I don't know, phases is the word for it, but basically he gets this big shield on him that you can't damage him through. And you see uh, Lemura, you know, doing the thing with his little green glowy thing on his hand. Uh, that is <laughs> yeah. taking down, the, that's taking down the boss's shield so he can damage him again. Yeah, and the damage you can do to the boss is actually capped. Um, so you have to do a minimum of three phases because uh, there is wow. a way to like leave the area, come back super OP and do it, but then it, it, you can't kill it super fast. Yeah, because you still have to go through all of the phases for it. Yeah. But I mean, it's fine. We have everything under control. Yeah, I was going to say, if this is like the speed run fight, I'd only imagine it's exponentially longer when you're trying to scatter it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And this is on the easiest difficulty for reference. Um, and this fight still takes really long. On the hardest difficulty, this this fight is honestly like a, a run killer. It's very easy to get one shot. And it takes very, very long because you do no damage. 
Are you at like an expected power level at this point in the speedrun? Yeah. As well? Or oh wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you haven't skipped yeah. over anything. Thing. Okay. Can I... Hello. Uh... Can I click it? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like you clicked in the floor for a second. I was spooked. Okay. So that that's basically the tutorial section. Uh, and now. Uh, the reason that we ended up like actually point. completing all of it and not skipping it is because we're now gonna head in um, to the temple on our left here. Or is it a temple? Yeah, it's a uh, some kind of church yeah, thing. I, yeah, I guess like a church. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I think they call it a temple in the game, but I don't remember. Yeah, and um, we're gonna be picking up. We're going to be going through a cutscene and then we're going to like um, pick up an item through the war table. Uh, one of you could explain what the war table is and how that works. Yeah, yeah sure. Or do you well, want to go, go for you, it? You, you got it, you got it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so the war table, um, uh, there's a bunch of uh, little missions and stuff on the war table um, that you can select and you, know, you can send out agents to fulfill them using like real life time. So it's kind of like an idle. Um, <laughs> Auto auto completes kind of thing based on real life time, like you know, Animal Crossing or something. Um, and uh, there's a lot of like story missions or um, like different locations you can unlock using a, one of the other currencies in the game called power. Um, and so, uh, <laughs> so uh, after this cutscene coming up, um, we can only access this cutscene after beating the prologue. And then the you can only access this one item from one of these missions after watching the cutscene. Even though we can we can skip it, there is a way to skip it. But you have to go through all of this just to get this one item that we want. Yeah, so this is the, the war table. And this is one of the few unskippable cutscenes um, in the game. Uh, so it's like a nice short break at the very beginning of the run. <laughs> That'd be a Although good place really... to get in a donation really quick. If yeah. I can ask one thing about the war table quickly too, is it kind of like a, is like the kind of the campaign in this game, the story, like you're trying to build up like a force against exactly. like, a, like a big enemy, yeah. kind of similar to like Mass Effect 3 or something? Okay. Yeah, you're trying to build up like an army that makes from sense. a small group of people. Cool, thank you. Sorry, T Tree, take it away. <laughs> no worries. I heard about donations. We've got donations. We've got a $50 donation from Amy who says, you've got this. We're all proud of you. And we've got $107.90 from an anonymous donor who says, excited to see Dragon Age Inquisition opening. I'm donating $1 for every hour this game took me to finish. Hopefully Lemura can do it in a bit less. <laughs> I, I hope Thank so, you so too. much for your donations. <laughs> That'd be a little bit overestimate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, so yeah, now we're finished with the war table, at least for now, we're gonna end up getting back to it later, because all I did was like, um, pick up the order on the item, I suppose. The mission is currently going. Um, and we're now gonna do one of the first glitches of this run, uh, which uh, really was significant back in 2019, I think. Yeah. Because uh, at the time the run was over two hours and now it's down to below 30. Because of this glitch? Yes. Yes. Okay. Technically, it was like an hour and 55 minutes, but... Yeah, uh, it's two hours. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, so... it, it still saved an hour and a half. So that's the world map glitch. That was found by Isala. Uh, and that lets you pretty much go to most of the overworld pins. There are some that doesn't show oh. up, and some main story ones doesn't have an area you can travel to from here. Um... But yeah, <laughs> that's that's how. That, that didn't look like much, time. but from what I understand, you can just go anywhere now. Yeah. So you Pretty okay? <laughs> so there's different on a lot of the like zones in the game. There's a like a part you can walk on that will just pull up the world map. It's kind of like on the edge of the map. Uh, it actually, if you look on the mini map right now, it's got that little um, arrow symbol. So that's what it is. Mm. And if you're in combat, when you walk on it, the map won't pop up instantly. So you can get onto the trigger and then quick save, uh, and then quick load, and then when you quick load back in, the map will load in, but it'll load in with every single location in the game on it, which is not supposed to happen. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty rad. 
You'll see another variant of this glitch also uh, coming up now where you like show the local map for the area you're in as well. So we're going to be doing that right now. Yeah. The only difference between them is I'm spamming the space bar when I'm like loading back in. Oh wow. Opens up this. So we're going here to pick up some power. Uh, power being a currency that you use in the game to unlock other areas, really. Yeah. Also, and, a lot of the, like, the main story is locked behind power, like having enough power. Not that that's relevant for the speedrun, but like for a casual <laughs> yeah. playthrough, it is relevant. Yeah. Uh, I'm also going to be picking up some materials real quick. I think it was called Downstone, what we're picking up. Yeah. I think uh, so, yeah. We're going to be crafting some gear later so we can get strong. So here we go, pick that up. Now we're going to head to Skyhold. <laughs> which, uh, it's a bit early. <laughs> Not yeah. supposed to be enter Skyhold this early in the in the game, but here we are. Yeah, so for people who are familiar with this game, you notice we went to Crestwood first. Um, Crestwood, going to Crestwood is what kind of made Skyhold appear on our map, okay, essentially. It nice. replaced, it like advanced our quest a bit and replaced Haven with Skyhold on the map. And you can see it's very dark and gloomy. It's not, it's not supposed to be this way either, but this is how it's going to be looking until the end of the game, so. <laughs> now we're headed back in to do some more war table stuff. Now I'm actually, I'm going to be picking up some more materials and then I'm going to advance my system clock forward uh, so I can just like instantly pick up these. So you'll see I pick this up now and oh, yeah. I've changed the time. System clock, you mean like the, P the clock on your PC? Yeah. So to auto-complete the war tables, you advance? Okay. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> casual great. time traveling, you know? It's just casual time traveling, <laughs> yeah. No I can already hear deal. the Animal Crossing fans raging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, you did mention Animal Crossing earlier. Yeah, you yeah. weren't kidding. <laughs> yeah. yeah, way back in the day, we used to change the clock like 20 times in a single run. Wow. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I guess if a run is like two hours long, yeah, you would do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now we're going to get into some uh, duplication action. That's why we picked up these materials, because we want to get a lot of them, and we want to get a lot of them fast. So you yeah. just do this at the vendor. This is patched out on the current one, but we're playing on day one patch at the moment. <laughs> Keyword at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. That, was, that was all triple. Yeah, you got Dupes, triple. That's easy. Nice. Yeah, that was really clean. And now I'm shutting off the game because now we're about to switch patches. Now we're going to play <laughs> on the current day this is, patch. This is, just <laughs> this is just unraveling. We're time traveling. We're switching <laughs> patches mid-run. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I love this. All right. <laughs> So uh, Origin might not be nice to me and not let me log in because I have to log in for an item that I need, the golden nug. Uh, the golden so I can, nug. Like, yeah, yeah, it's a nug is a creature in the game, and it's golden, and it lets you, <laughs> like... It, um, it's, it's like a semi-new game plus feature. Yeah, it lets you synchronize all of your schematics from earlier playthroughs. Um, but yeah, we have time for a few donations. We've got donations for all the time you need. To, uh, Vera sends us $20 and says, Good luck, Lamora. We have $50 from Tater Tot Army, who says, Can't wait to see one of my fave games ran at SGDQ. Good luck, Inquisitor. We have $10 from Breezeby, who says, The first of many donations. Best of luck to all the runners, and a huge shout out to our wonderful host, a tea tree. Heart. <laughs> Thank you, Breezeby. Right back at you. Breezeby is fantastic and will be hosting later, so <laughs> keep an ear out for that. Cute. <laughs> We also have $25 from Sly Dante, who says, Wait, we only have a short amount of time to meet the goal for the Milkman cutscene in Psychonauts? Well, then no time to waste. We need to start off SGDQ with a bang. Okay. Yes, we have an incentive for a oh, just superlatively enjoyable scene uh, in the next run Psychonauts. So if you want to see that happen, if you want to know about the Milkman, you have just a little bit of time to make that happen. Okay, so Origin did not agree with me now. Um, so I'm going to try some things and launch it again and see if it lets me log in. Oh, Origin. Oh, Origin. <laughs> oh, Origin. We've had so well, 
for this game specifically, we've had so many random issues with people. Like, uh, for, oh, pe yeah. for people who are <laughs> familiar with PC games, you'll know that, like, a lot of PC games use live split load removers to um, get rid of, you know, load screens. So we, I, I, we had a runner who had two different, he had the game on two different Origin accounts. Um, and it would work on one of his Origin accounts, but not on the other the load remover <laughs> despite Wicked. not changing the install or anything at all it would work if he launched it through origin on one account but not if he launched it through origin on the other account i'm pretty sure the and i replicated it he gave... should work now for yeah everyone. yeah we did in the past but i'm just saying there's like yeah. origin is weird <laughs> yeah exactly. no i noticed you used the phrase we've had problems with people but it seems to me like origin is really the crux well, of the pe issue here people have had <laughs> well, like everyone ha everyone has had a different problem with origin and like replicating the issues people have is hard so do those technically count as do those count as um you know, d different uh, different kinds of runs or those different categories depending on what origin glitch you have? <laughs> hey, uh, depending on how much time we have, we have yep. plenty more donations. Yeah, yeah go yeah. for it. Say, get them in, go dude. Ahead. Get them in. We're going to deal with okay. origin and just keep popping those donations and I'm sure people are excited to get them read. So let's hear them. <laughs> no problem. We've got $20 from J. Kyle Pittman who says, Happy GDQ. Let's get that Milkman cutscene for Psychonauts. And Rambo Medic sends us $25 and says, Milkman cutscene incentive. We've also got a $25 anonymous donation that says, that group, that group hug broke my heart in a good way. So good to see everyone back and ready for SGDQ. And $20 from Cartridge Blowers who says, Hey, GDQ fam, for my first donation of the week during this really incredible Dragon Age run, I wanted to say I'm so glad we're all back and helping out my favorite cause in the world. For a tea tree, I give you the gift of verse with this haiku. Games Done Quick is here. Going fast to help good causes. Shoutouts to Bingus. <laughs> Thank you, Cartridge Blowers. Cartridge Blowers is also a fantastically talented host that you can hear later in the week. So keep your other ear out for them. Okay, let's see if Origin is uh, going to be nice and let me log in. Yeah, let's go Origin. <laughs> I still Let's don't hope. understand why this issue happens for you and no one else. <laughs> there we go. It's logging hey, in. Okay. Everything we'll is fine. Tries to charm. And we had <laughs> plenty of time for donations, so it all yeah. works yeah. out. It's yeah, good. yeah, yeah. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> it's good because we <laughs> might have a ton of time for donations the rest of the one. <laughs> yeah. I'm stoked. This this definitely felt like a big setup, so I am excited to see how this is going to pay off here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, this so this we're is all RNG some... seating. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna hop in to do some more duplication here. Um, letters, maybe, if you could explain. Yeah, so this is the duplication glitch that kind of still works in the current patch. So in Skyhold, you have a storage chest, which is basically supposed to just store extra items you have. Um, if you put an item in here and then you, you know, select it in the chest, um, if you hit spacebar, which will like take the item out of the chest and escape, which exits out of the um, storage screen altogether at the same, kind of the same time. It's a little bit off from exactly the same time. Um, it'll take the item out of the chest into your inventory, but it'll also leave it in the chest, so it duplicates it. Um, so we're going to do this to get 60 or so amulets of power, which are basically a item you can use to gain a free skill point, and they're all kind of limited to a specific character, and all of these are for Varric. Um, because that's the one we can get kind of early on. Okay. Which squad yeah. mate is Varric? Varric is the archer kind of um, dwarf guy. Okay, okay. Yeah, this one that's I can see Varric. on screen right now, <laughs> that's Varric. Hi, Varric. He is also present in the second game, so. People who play that will know him too. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> I, love this, now... like, I love this frantic mashing just to force feed him all these amulets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the helmet I want, it's this helmet. <laughs> Correct. Okay, so yeah, we just force fed him a ton of amulets and stuff. They basically give you like ability points that you can spend. Yep. Uh, so now we can get everything on him. And now I'm, I'm crafting. Um, some specific pieces of armor that I'm gonna equip him with as well. 
so that he gets strong. I think this was specifically for crit chance, right? Yeah, yep, crit yeah, chance. Crit chance, um, some health, and then like uh, a little bit of crit damage, I believe, as well. Yeah. yeah. A lot of crit damage. Yeah, because so, so, some of the stuff. So basically, when you use this um, material, great bear hide, in there's different kinds of like item slots. Some of them give you crit chance. The other ones give you dexterity, and dexterity is the stat that gives you crit damage. Lem, how long did it take you to memorize all this menuing? Uh, a while. <laughs> I was gonna say, because this is a lot, uh, yeah. Yeah, I had to have notes up on the side, and I would constantly, like, mess up and be like, yeah, yeah well, it's not this thing, it's that thing. Um, but, I mean, we got there in the end. One of the other runners so. actually only has the schematics that are necessary for this speedrun on... Like, he bought a separate Origin account, got an entire another copy of the game, so he could just have only the schematics he needed. Amazing. So like, that makes the menuing way faster and way easier because you don't have to like look for the right thing. It's just there. All right, so now I'm upgrading uh, the charging bowl and I'm doing auto level on Varric. It gives us all of the abilities. Uh, and I'm going to be choosing some very specific abilities and also placing them down where I'm used to having them, at least. Um, I'm assuming those are just like quick access slots in the bottom right there? Yes. Yeah. Cool. But they're also like the only ones you can use, right? Like you can yeah, unlock other exactly. abilities, but you can only have eight selected at a time to use. Yeah. I'm assuming that was the upgraded uh, charging bowl, by the way, because that was way faster. Yep. Yeah. It also gives you better maneuverability too. You were able to turn faster and stuff. Um, so that's very nice. Now we're headed to the Arbor Wilds. Um, uh, well, technically the Altar of Mythal, but Arbor Wilds is on the same map, so we're just gonna glitch there. Alright, so this is a really uh, weird glitch. Uh, <laughs> um, this is one of the oldest glitches, you know, that was found kind of by speedrunners specifically. All the duplication glitches were well known in the casual community as well. Um, so basically, what? you can go into this mode called tactical mode by zooming like your camera out, strap, so which is basically supposed to kind of make it like a tactical what RPG the? where you can command your teammates to go, you know, specific spots using the mouse. Uh, if you go into <laughs> tactical mode while out of bounds or like kind of sliding down a slope, it gets really confused about where to where it's a, you're supposed to be. So it'll just like zoom in on some weird part of the map. And it doesn't know how to path you to places either. So if you click to go somewhere that's, you know, in bounds while you're out of bounds or out of bounds while you're sliding down a slope or something like that, it'll just like teleport you there. So that's what we did there. Very convenient. <laughs> it looks really cool. I mean, it's kind of hard to follow, but it also looks really cool. Yeah, it's it's really weird. Are yeah, you so able to uh, preserve a little bit of momentum out of the bull rush when you jump there? Yeah. Neat. So I'm jumping before I run out of energy, so I can keep the momentum going a bit longer. Neato. So yeah, now uh, this is also where the action is going to begin to pick up now that we're entering the the temple of Mythal. Uh, for people who have played the game, you'll know that this is a pretty late stage in the game now. Uh, and uh, you're going to see what we're going to end up doing with the, like in the temple. I want to know how Corypheus I am excited. To life. <laughs> and his gonna life be force passes on to any <laughs> So here, uh, this is the only puzzle that we do. Uh, and it's just like a simple walk over these tiles and make sure you don't touch the previous ones and you're all good. Yeah, there's actually like a lot of puzzles in this if you've done it kind of casually that you can do. That are like more, much more difficult variations on that one. That one's kind of just there to teach you it, how it works, but yeah. Oh, that was loud. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. Uh, See it. Okay. <laughs> I'm just like looking at the damage now. Okay. Okay, Varric, just don't do the ability. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we use yeah. Varric pretty much entirely for combat. But it's a bit mm. awkward in this section because he doesn't really have um, <laughs> like AOE ability. So all of it, it's single target. And that takes a bit of time when you have a lot of enemies to clear out sometimes. Bro, you are beefed. Holy Come cow. 
That is true. <laughs> and so you haven't done any like leveling up really, right? This is all just like gear and like abilities? Yes. So we're but, level four here and all the enemies here other than like the final boss will be level 16. The, level, the, the final boss is scaled to your level, so he's actually lower than uh, much lower than sixteen. <laughs> so, okay, well, <laughs> wait a oh, second. There we went. <laughs> so that's called switch clipping. Uh, when you're mid air uh, and you go into tactical mode and then switch between uh, different what characters, you kind of go in the opposite direction of what you, where you were going in in the air. So that lets us just go out of bounds. You know, no big deal. <laughs> So we went there to hit some specific triggers, so we didn't actually have to go through the entire underground section. Is it is not Did Derek and, do a, uh, like a teleport as well that I saw? Yes, he has this ability you're seeing here is evade. It's just like a teleport forward, but he also has an ability <laughs> that um, kind of like set a mark on the ground and teleport back to it. All right. So this is another switch clip that's a little there bit more go. involved here. Nice. Ended up up here. Uh, I'm gonna be quick saving, quick loading, real, real quick. Uh, that's just to make the switch clipping more reliable. Uh, gonna evade. Okay, very sure. <laughs> I'm gonna evade off the edge here, and then <laughs> you're gonna switch clip backwards with a ridiculous amount of speed. And it, it keeps going even when I'm not in tactical cam anymore, because now, now the game is just paused. So. <laughs> Nice. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Skipped going through the rest First of the time. So that's nice. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't bad. Except for him not like not doing his thing. That I looked guess. great, like, dude. That looked awesome. Thing. So I put down fallback plan here. That's Varric's teleport ability, and you'll see why I'm doing that in a moment. So I'm going into this sequence here. And you're supposed to kill Samson and, and stuff like that. But we're just gonna teleport outside of the arena. Go up to the door, and the game thinks that we finished killing them, so it puts us into the next cutscene. If you don't <laughs> skip that cutscene, though, you will die, because the enemies are still there. So... <laughs> we're also making sure that it's us that's drinking from the well here, and not Morrigan. Um, yeah, so this is this was one of the funny things when the, we first found um, wow. the map glitch, is that we never had anyone... We never had the Inquisitor drink from the well because you get an extra boss fight if you do that so like just from years of doing this we was like oh well how how are we gonna do this because morgan doesn't show up it um in skyhold if you glitch the room this way and it kind of seemed like a dead end until we decided oh just have the inquisitor drink from the well and then it's no longer a dead end yeah and then there'll be a boss fight <clears throat> that's a uh, a high dragon um, and it will, will go by very quick. Yeah, that, now you'll see why, like, Varric ends up being so powerful and stuff. Because this dragon is about to get, um, destroyed. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, so, um, the dragons in this game are the enemies that have, like, the highest HP. Sure? They have, like, around 250 sure to 300,000 health. Just keep an eye out. Um, that's a big number. Reference. So it's, it's a big number. Most of our individual hits are doing like a few hundred. It might, but uh, yeah, you'll see. All right, so I'm gonna be setting up the focus glitch. There we go, I got it. I'm gonna go close and I'm just gonna spam leaping shot. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and that was the boss fight. <laughs> yeah. That was the boss fight. Uh, okay. <laughs> Say what now? <laughs> All I right. feel like I missed something. I looked away for a second. <laughs> uh, all right. So I guess it's probably a good idea to explain <laughs> yeah, how, how we're so broken. So Varric is the, you know, party member who... So all the party members in this game have a specific kind of specialization class they get. So Varric gets Artificer. Um, so we've used some of the stuff from that already, like uh, Fallback Blade. But the key thing is there's this passive that reduces your cooldowns whenever you get a critical hit. And we have Varric um, pretty close to, like, 90% crit chance. Um, and it counts each hit of Leaping Shot, which is the, the ability we're using individually. And there's 13 shots, so 
that counts as like 13 hits to reduce cooldowns. Yeah. Uh, which lets you basically just spam Leaping Shot. Just have infinite um, crits and infinite abilities. And Amazing. Additionally, there's another passive in the Archer Tree that basically scales up your damage whenever you get a hit with a bow for like five or 10 oh, seconds. But since we're getting so many hits in five or 10 seconds, we get like a thousand percent more damage. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry to cut you off, but we're about to head off into the final boss fight of the game. We're gonna oh, we're fight here Rufius. already. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're, we are here. And, the, and this boss is split up into like three different phases. And we're going to be going through all of them pretty fast. So, you'll, you'll see. <laughs> dragon, how clever of you. So I'm just going to get up close to him here. Ooh, uh, and I'm, you I'm just going to do a leaping shot if, if it wants to work, which it doesn't. Will. I might have to do my other shot, but, but we'll see. There, there we go. Nice. Wow. A bit slow, but that's fine. Here we have another dragon. So since we used a focus glitch earlier, that let us not use any focus, which is like the ultimate ability. Um, I got some bad news for you, dragon. Yeah. <laughs> so much damage <laughs> disappeared. <laughs> yeah, so his ultimate ability basically makes it so you like double or triple? Triple every... Yeah, triple. Yeah. <laughs> every uh, like archery attack you do. Lemur really out here renaming okay. this game to just Age Inquisition. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now I, I want you all to pay attention to Corypheus here. So I'm gonna walk up here. And then the fade swallows the world, right? It, it messed up. Uh, oh, no. well, we, are re we are reloading that because I want to show it off. <laughs> I mean, you got time. You are well under estimate uh, uh, right now. You were yeah, zooming. Yeah, I think. I think uh, yeah, I can this afford is... to do this a few times, until it works. <laughs> let's, let's see the cool stuff, let's see the cool stuff. Exactly. Be ready on time, though, in case we do get this very quick. No, I am not sure how many yeah, tries they... this would take. Yeah, the Black Suit after should be a bit longer as well, since I'm doing it all the way up here, but... Yeah, that's true. The breach is getting bigger! Come on, Corypheus. And then the fade swallows the world, right? Oh, I'm messing yeah. up my timing. I think that's <laughs> I <right>. usually get... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have to pay close attention to Corypheus himself? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, whenever, whenever I don't mess up the timing, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I usually get this, like, really easy. I don't know why I, I keep messing up the timing oh, here. Dude, don't, wor but... don't, don't worry about it. We're having a good time. Stalling for time, that's that's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. <laughs> and then the fade swallows the world, right? Now it was too late. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> I mean if, if, if you're giving me opportunities for donations, I'll take them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that the run would have been uh, done like twenty five dollars from Diabellus, who says, looking at someone finish Dragon Age Inquisition faster than me playing through the tutorial area, it's something. <laughs> go go Lemura. And one hundred dollars from this is Chris, who says, "Me and my friend Darga have somehow played more than five hundred hours of this game together, enjoying the story and characters, and laughing at the many glitches we've casually found. I'm excited to see how this game gets totally broken open. Good luck." Okay. More donations. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but yeah, some more donations. <laughs> no problem. We are still working on that breaking open part. I promise it's there. I have seen the practice runs. We have $25 from Yimbeert, who says, saving this one for the VOD so I can watch it with my partner later. Hi, Pipistrel. We're both massive fans of Dragon Age and looking forward to watching it get absolutely shredded. I have no idea what you're doing right now, but I bet it's really cool. SGDQ hype. The breach is getting bigger. Right. Come on. And then the fade swallows the world, right? Uh, ah. <laughs> excuse me? I, I really want to show this up. I really want to show this up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's so cool. Yeah, it's it's like it's worth it. First comes it. to worst, you can show off the other thing, but it's not yeah, quite the, as cool. Yeah, the backup, but yeah. Yeah, no, I really want to show off this because this is something that I found as well on accident. <laughs> oh, and if you found um, it, you got personal attachment to it for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, yeah. right. This is See, that's why I want to show that's it off. actually slower that we're trying to show <laughs> off. The bridge is getting bigger. It's only like and a the little bit slower. The world, right? Oh. Okay. So how do you... Come on, what? fingers. Just like, okay. do, do the thing. Do the muscle memory that you're used to. Hello? <laughs> uh, so basically what I'm doing is when I, when I go up there, I shoot three times, and then I'm supposed to teleport back. 
And then what? And then something's gonna he's... happen. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I just can't believe that Origin is doing this to you. Origin, once again. Uh, yeah, yeah, Origin, yeah. Yeah, yeah. hundred <laughs> percent, Origin. The bridge is getting bigger, and then the fate swallows the world, right? Okay, I'm too late. Yeah. I'm it, pressing it somehow late. forced you onto a version where this trick doesn't work the way you expect. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, maybe, maybe that's what's happening. It, like, changed to some weird patch or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, while we're working on that setup, uh, I Scribble sent in $50 and says, amazed to see Dragon Age at GDQ. I'm in awe of Lemura's skill. Good luck to everyone this week. <laughs> and Wizard of Ozymandias donated $25 and says, so glad to see Dragon Age Inquisition at SGDQ. The Love this franchise so much. And then the oh, I thought that was going to be it. Same. So if, if when he does that, like, swipe attack, does that mean that you haven't gotten it? Or... Yeah, when he just stands still over there, that means I haven't gotten it. Y okay. You will know. You will know. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> it's it's going to be very clear. Kind of sucks. Um, you got this first try, I think, in both the practice runs, right? Yeah. yeah. Everybody in chat line is sending you their energy right now to get this okay, slower okay, swag spread. That looks amazing. Yes. <laughs> it's not actually slower, though. The is getting but, bigger. you know. And then the fade swallows the world. There we go. Oh! <laughs> 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 See, nice. and, and you really... time. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Okay, it really was obvious that it... <laughs> yeah. Uh, I haven't seen him gone off to the side like that before. Usually he goes, like, past me, but, I mean, I'll take it. He showed it off. <laughs> okay, that was worth it. That was worth it, for sure. Yeah. Definitely. I'm, I'm happy I was able to show it off. I don't know why I was struggling, but... We got there. We got there. GG, dude. Nice. <laughs> GG. Uh, yeah, that's the end of the game. Corypheus, as you can see, is dying right now. So... <laughs> that was so fun. That was so fun, dude. Um, yeah, should I, like... Yeah, you got final shoutouts? Yeah. I have some friends I wanna... I wanna say hi to, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanna, I wanna give a shout-out to my... Some of my friends, uh, among them being Amy, Molly, Cody, Ryan, Isaac, Porkmas, Norlin, Red Cricket, Crisis, Duke, Try, Nex, Bumpkin, Coco, Lama, Aya, Sinoda, and my best friend Alice. I want to give a big shout out to Fizzy for helping me like get into live split stuff and teaching me a bit oh, like how it works. Um, so I made there is a there is a full auto splitter for Dragon Age Inquisition that I made for my own convenience, but it's available to anyone else who wants to run it. <laughs> so, you can also join uh, the BioWare speedrun in Discord if you're interested in learning more about the run. Um, and uh, yeah, like, big thanks to Coconut, Brian, Letters for joining me on commentary. Thank you so much for having me. I had so much fun and being here. Time. Follow Lamura <laughs> on Twitch. It's Lamura with two U's. Uh, he, he, it's a Thanks. very fun environment to hang out and I really enjoy his stream. So please, please go type that in and follow him right now. <laughs> If you enjoyed the run, go do that. If you didn't enjoy the run, yeah. do it anyway. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you want to see more Dragon Age runs, I'll definitely be doing more of those in the future. I'm also going to begin doing other categories too, so. Yeah, you're going to be doing the all dragons category, right? Oh. That sounds yeah. cool. Yeah, got, got to cool. take your world record. Like that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Hey, let me take your coat. Please, relax and get comfortable. We've got some snacks in the kitchen and... Wait, wh what do you mean it's not that kind of hosting? But I spent all day so far in the kitchen. No, it's fine, I just... Okay. Mm-hmm. And you say you've got a script for this. All right. Right, week-long speedrunning marathon. Oh, Doctors Without Borders, they're fantastic. Okay, I think I can work with this. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Summer Games Done Quick Online 2021, powered by Twitch. We are raising money for Doctors Without Borders, an international medical humanitarian aid organization that works in over 70 countries around the world, providing life-saving medical humanitarian care and speaking out about what they see in those areas. Their work aids people based solely on need, irrespective of race, religion, gender, or political affiliation. 
MSF relies mainly on the generosity of individual donors, with over 90% of MSF's income coming from private donors giving small amounts. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, MSF has distributed 3.21 million COVID-19 protective equipment, mask, and hygiene kits, and currently has projects with COVID-19 activities in 70 countries. Now, if you caught that first run, thank you so much for being here. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we know you're going to enjoy the whole rest of the week. And if you're just arriving, you're here at a perfect time too. Not only do we have fantastic runs coming up for you in just a few minutes, but you also have a super fun Dragon Age Inquisition VOD to catch up on. But first, we'd like to uh, let you know a few more things about Doctors Without Borders. All right, we're still just setting up for our next run. And while we do that, I would like to express some supreme gratitude to our wonderful donors. We have $50 from Awkward Almond, who says, Dragon Age Inquisition helped my husband and I get through the entirety of 2020 with a smile, and we are both excited to see it played in a whole new way. Good luck, guys. This is awesome so far. I agree. That was uh, really something. That that strags, uh, the swag strat was totally worth it. And we've got, oh, we have donations for the milkman. We have ten dollars from Rambo Ma, who says, "I am the milkman. My milk is delicious." Well, I am the host man, and my memes are hilarious. But if you'd like to see the milkman and and see that what I said is true, then please uh, help us make that donation. We are getting real close on that goal, actually. I see we are within $150, so let's bring it the rest of the way there. We also have $250 from Emmett, who says, Hype for SGDQ. It's going to be a great week. Soraya sends us $20 and says, GDQ always makes me so happy, and I'm thrilled it's kicking off with one of my favorite games. I am so excited to see how much more broken this already broken game can get. Best of luck, Lamora. Shoutouts to Tea Tree for doing an amazing job anchoring the event. Well, thank you for your kindness, Sarai, and your donation. You know, like I mentioned earlier, MSF's uh, income comes from private donors in small amounts. For example, a $20 donation can purchase a suture set containing essential surgical instruments for emergency wound repair in the field. So 
every donation, no matter how large or how small, has a profound impact on the work that MSF can do. And if you're interested in some other things your donations can do, we have wonderful prizes available. If you want to see those, you can go to gamesdonequick.com slash tracker, check by event, and then look at the prizes. The prizes available right now during this block include a series of cross stitches and perler paintings for everything from Mega Man. I see we have a cross stitch of Mega Man wall zips if you're familiar with the classic Mega Man games. The official title for this cross stitch is Floors Are Just Suggestions, which if you've ever played or seen one of those speed runs is absolutely the gospel truth. And then we have some amazing looking Mega Man Perler paintings. That Perler painting is a minimum donation of $25 to be uh, entered to win that, uh, as is the cross stitch for the classic Mega Man games. So if that is your thing, those are both available for you now until uh, James Bond 007 Nightfire in about six hours. We also have uh, incentives and prizes for Psychonauts, including another Perler painting of Raz, the head Psychonaut, and Dogen, one of your friends. Uh, the Raz Perler painting is also at a $25 minimum donation, and the Dogen print is a $10 minimum donation. All right. We are getting ready for our next run. There'll be a short break, and we will be right back with you. So make sure to stay hydrated, stay limber, and stay hype. We'll see you soon.
Welcome back to SGDQ 2021 online powered by Twitch. It is my great and good pleasure to tell you that we are already almost to $15,000 raised thanks to each and every one of you and thanks to a generous $2,500 donation from Mott. That Mott says, I always enjoyed the classic Lego Star Wars games. But boy, could it take a while to get through and be frustrating in parts. Let's see it get blitzed for once. Yes, we have a super exciting Lego Star Wars uh, series coming up on the, th uh, I think it's the 3DS later in the week. I am definitely going to be tuning in for that one, and I hope you all will as well. Now we have a short message from Doctors Without Borders, and then we'll be right back with our next run. Hi, this is Elena. I'm a nursing activity manager with Doctor Without Borders. Thank you to those supporting our work with your generous gift. As a member of Doctor Without Borders, I wanted to say thank you. It's supporters like you that make my work possible. Thank you all for making a difference and supporting our life-saving work. All right. Thank you so much for that. We are just getting ready for our next run. Uh, before we do, I would like to uh, thank SirDan1987 for sending in $25 and saying, another year of GDQ to start off the week off from work. What a happy way to start the week off. Best of luck to the runners and for the cause. I'll be here all week. And $100 from Agent Nams, who says, been watching GDQ for two years now on YouTube and finally got to see it live and donate for the first time. Thank you, runners, for your amazing speedruns and all you do. Let's crush it. Thank you, Agent Nams. Thank you for everyone who is watching, donating, enjoying. Just being here means so much to each and every one of us. Uh, no one more so than myself. It is an absolute pleasure to be here right now with all of you. Speaking of those who make this all possible, we'd like to thank uh, some of our sponsors, including the Yeti, the official merch supporter of Games Done Quick events since 2011. The Yeti has donated over $1,750,000 to GDQ charities, and all profits from the SGDQ 2021 collection go to Doctors Without Borders. That collection is available until July 11th, at midnight, so get your order in before it's all gone at theyeti.com. I will tell you, having looked at things on previous events, having bought something from the Yeti before, it is also possible that things will sell out. So if you are interested in uh, those badges, which will go foil once 500 are sold, or any of the amazing shirt designs. Uh, we've got Resident Evil 7. We've got Untitled Goose Game. I would recommend getting in on those now. The arcade uh, mouse and desk mats. They are all, uh, all going to be in stock now, but I can't promise it will stay that way for the whole week.
while we get things prepared, I just, we have a flood of donations. Uh, Y'all are doing a tremendous job with those incentives. The Milkman cutscene for Psychonauts is met. The Kirby Superstar Arena run is already well on its way, 10% of the way to its $5,000 goal. The James Bond 007 Nightfire category switch to all tokens is also more than 10% of the way there. And uh, one of my personal favorites for the day that I'm hoping we can do is the Metal Wolf Chaos XD cutscene showcase. Uh, uh, there is no chance this game wasn't going to be played on July 4th. It is the most American game that America never made. And if you would like to see the uh, tremendously uh, fitting cutscenes for this day and this game, uh, we are getting started on that incentive as well. So we thank you for helping us make all of these exciting, funny, and uh, super fun incentives possible. Again, I want to stress that donations at literally any amount are so meaningful to MSF's work. Like, a $10 donation lets MSF purchase 45 emergency food rations for use in a crisis or natural disaster, and a $20 donation, uh, as I said earlier, can purchase a suture set for essential surgical instruments and emergency wound repair in the field. So everything that you do, every donation that you give by going to games, uh, games done quick com slash donate means the world to us and to Doctors Without Borders. You know, while chat is grooving on these hot beats, and I'm going to have to listen back to those later, I, I would love to hear it. I know uh, just how amazing some of these OC remixes are, uh, and unfortunately, I can't hear them in my feed, but uh, I will definitely go back and listen later. But while chat is grooving on those hot beats, I am grooving on these amazing donations. We have $25 from MD LatQP, who says, MD here, saying hello and happy SGDQ to all. Fantastic work so far on Dragon Age Inquisition from Lemura. Shout out to a tea tree hosting brilliantly, and greetings to everyone in the GDQ Discord. So excited for another. Let's meet some incentives. And $25 from Bunnybox24. They say, good luck on the run. Hashtag best week of summer. Hashtag SGDQ21. Flying Slowpoke donates $50 and says, F-Zero GX is one of my all-time favorite racing games. Grew up with it and still playing it till today. Shoutouts to the Royal Funk community following the entire marathon for years and shoutouts to everyone working at GDQ for so many years. But hey, Flying Slowpoke, shout out to you 
the Royal Funk community, and everyone donating to make this event happen. We have $25 from Kishen X, or Kishenx, who says, So excited for this year's Summer Games Done Quick. Good luck to all the runners, and let's have a great week. Elite for Elijah donates $25 and says, Hello, GDQ. I'm always excited to catch this event every year, and this year's SGDQ is shaping up to be an awesome one. Putting this donation towards that arena run and Kirby Superstar because I want to see Nippo absolutely dominate that mode. Ah, the arena and Kirby Superstar. Uh, a a longtime favorite of mine, and I know Nippo will do an amazing job when we get to that incentive. Casey Stranger donates $50 and says, You know, I'd leave a more creative comment, but, you know, gotta go fast. <laughs> and I am given agrees with their $100 donation that just says, Gotta go fast. I can't disagree. I think it is just about time for us to go fast with F-Zero GX and one David J. Speaking of going fast, I was up just a bit premature. We have time for just a little bit longer. We have an anonymous $100 donation. It says, hyped for the F-Zero run. Hey, just like me. And $25 from Perry Dotto, who says, wishing the best to all the runners